We are not auditioning for fearless leader. We don't need a president to tell us what direction to go. We know what direction we want to go. We want the Paul Ryan budget. We just need a president to sign this stuff. We don't need someone to think it up or design it. We have a House and a Senate. The, the leadership now for the modern conservative movement for the next 20 years will be coming out of the House and the Senate. Pick a Republican with, an, to, with enough working digits to handle a pen to become President of the United States. Well, who's the boss here? I get, well, the boss is going to be Mitt Romney. But he I'm signed a Grover petition. The boss is going to be Mitt Romney. But he signed on. He's the a man of honor, I assume. Let me, let me, he's a man of honor, but the boss is going to be Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney is going to run his campaign. He's going to make the case for what he but wants to But he's sold out to this guy. He isn't sold out there anyone, Chris. I mean, that, you know, you, 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 nice, you know, excitable terms, but he hasn't sold out. Well, anybody. if I told you, just do because, everything just I tell because, you to do, and you sign the paper. That's not what this is. He didn't say, you didn't, we do everything I tell you to do. Where did I would sign your paper if you told me to do a well, bunch of stuff. that's your choice. That's your choice. Okay, why did Romney sign a petition? Because he, he believes in making the tax cuts that are going to be necessary to, stir, to spur econ okay. economic growth. And so this is consistent with what he wants to do, number one. Number two, the reality for, for everyone in this, in, whether you're in the House, the Senate, is that if Mitt Romney is the president, he's going to govern. And he's going to act on behalf of, the, of what's in the best interest of the people of the country. And I think, you know, okay. my sense is he's his own man. So the okay, reality okay, of it but is you know what? what the if he was with. his own man, he would have done what the other guy did. So I'm not well, saying well, something you've read that, that uh, Mitt Romney said about foreign policy that intrigues you. Something interesting he said in his whole life that's of importance to you. <laughs> Anything. Anything he's ever said or I've thought not, or I've read. Not read. Any Mitt evidence Romney's he's ever read a journal or I've thought not, of I've not read Okay, Mitt name Romney's a country in the world where he's expressed a view. I've not read Mitt Romney's views or musings on foreign policy. There aren't any. That, Chris, <laughs> look, Chris, I mean, I get, I, get the, I, get the, I get the rub here. You want to make this guy to be a vacuous, empty business suit, and that's just yeah, not. Yeah, that's right. That, and, and you that's got just, it. You well, you're point. wrong. You're wrong on that. And it, well, mate, shoot, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Tell me what he's ever said on foreign policy. It's not a good way to approach this election with that point of view. Look at him. Give this guy a chance, just like everyone else. It's like everyone gave Barack Obama a chance to lay out his foreign policy. Let me tell you, you know why I like Barack Obama? Because four years before he ran for president, he explained his position on the Iraq war. And I said, yeah, here's a guy who's gone yeah, through I, I something. I don't support this, what, Has your guy ever that done was, that? That was very, has your that guy was, ever expressed that was the view? That foreign policy experience. I don't support the war. That was a lot smarter than W, your guy. Oh, please, well, come on. This is a total hopeless I just here, hope folks. the empty suit offers some resistance to Dan Sino, who's a smart guy, and probably a lot deeper than, uh, than Romney on foreign policy. Michael Steele, you know how deep come what? back when you've well, done your you homework. Wonder, how deep do you know when that you he come is, back, you do your homework and actually listen and learn from I have man. listened to Romney. There is nothing there on that front. Oh. Nothing on foreign policy except whatever Grover gives him the sign he has signed. Let me finish tonight where I started. I think there's a lot of open space in this fellow Mitt Romney, wide open space. I know he wants to cut taxes. That's what people like him say, just as they tend to play golf and follow pro sports news. Mitt is like every other business type. He wants to cut taxes and regulation. He's not all that interested in other things, those other things that people in politics and government get so passionate about. He's not that interested, let's admit it, in foreign policy. He's not that interested in the world, really, not the world beyond the areas he needed to visit to make money. He's not that interested in politics, from what I can tell. Does anyone think he'd be watching this network at night or Fox or CNN or anywhere that politics is being discussed? Would he be reading the columns where the debate is occurring? I doubt it. He's interested right now simply because he's running right now for president. Well, this is precisely why he makes such a handy tool for the Grover Nordquists and the Bill Crystals of the world. They've got purposes, Grover in tax cutting, Bill in an aggressive hawkish foreign policy. And they can use Romney to get whatever they've, well, what they've never gotten from Barack Obama, a useful tool. And this is the giant reason to fear Romney's election. Not that he may turn right on his own, but that he doesn't care about any of the issues of government here in America or America's place in the world as much as the guys who do care very much and who will push him and shape him to their needs and ideologies once he's in power.